All right, so this is a problem involving both translational and rotational equilibrium. Um, and the, the biggest thing to do when you encounter problems like this is you really are gonna use the free body diagram to your advantage. Because once you set up the free body diagram, it becomes pretty clear um, which forces are doing what, which forces need to balance out each other, and how we can set different forces equal to each other to arrive at a conclusion that we need. So in this case, what we're looking at is, is what the force from the wall might be. So we need to figure out what the force from the wall is. And so we're gonna say, okay, this is an angle of 40 degrees, and we've got a mass of a sign that's 100 kilograms. Maybe that sign says, I heart AP physics. So a very common sign you see around. Um, what we need to do is figure out exactly how much force this wall is going to exert on the bar that's holding this sign up. And so what we need to do first is identify what forces are at play here. What forces are acting on this bar? So we're going to set it up as the bar is kind of just a stick. And for this problem, luckily, we have a, a, a bar of negligible mass and a string holding that bar up that's also of negligible mass. Um, so we can just treat it as a, a massless stick pivoting about a point. So the first thing we want to do is identify our axis of rotation. Where is this bar going to rotate about? And the easiest thing to do is to put it on the wall because the, rotate, the string is pulling it up like this, the sign is pulling it down like this, and so we're going to put the axis of rotation right here. I'm going to just mark it with an X. Now, there are a few forces at play uh, between the sign and the wall here. We are going to first draw our force of tension for the string, and then we're also going to draw the force pulling down another force of tension from the sign. Another force of tension from the sign. If we're looking at the force of tension that, that's coming from the sign, we know the sign is in equilibrium, right? So the force of gravity on the sign, the force of tension on the sign has to be equal to each other. So in this case, we know our force of tension has to equal 100 times our acceleration due to gravity. In these problems, I'm going to call it 10. So our force of tension here is 1,000 newtons. Now, what other forces are at play? What other forces are at play? Well, we also know that there is a normal force exerted from the wall here. A normal force exerted from the wall here. Um, since there is a string holding this up or tying it up, um, we're going to assume that this wall is frictionless, and so we're not going to have a force of friction that is also maybe preventing this, this bar from being held down, and we'll see why we can do that uh, in a moment. So, first of all, how do we know that there's a normal force here? How do we know that there has to be a normal force? If I have a force of tension pulling this bar down, and I have a force of tension pulling it at an angle here, the problem is we need to break that force of tension into components. So I need to say, well, this is the vertical component of that force of tension, and I'm going to say this is the horizontal component of that force of tension. <clears throat> and so that's when we recognize, oh, of course there has to be a normal force. If there were no normal force here, we would see two forces up and down that are canceling each other out translationally, and we would see a force to the left. If there was no force to the right to cancel that force out, we, wouldn't, we, we would have this bar accelerating to the left through the wall, and that's just not what happens when you hang a sign up, um, hopefully. I don't know how many carpenters there are out there, but I, they would likely confirm that that is not happening, not happening when you're hanging up a sign. So, we've got FTY and FTX. So how can we solve, how can we find these values? Well, we know that FT, or sorry, this angle is 40 degrees. So this angle becomes 50 degrees. I didn't draw that to scale very well. Um, but 
we know that then ftx is sine of 50 times ft, and we know that fty is cosine of 50 times ft. Now, what we need to do next is recognize that, yes, these objects are in translational equilibrium. The problem is we don't know what the force of tension is. So let's write another set of equations that helps us discover that it is in rotational or helps us identify how it is in rotational equilibrium. And if something is in rotational equilibrium, that means that its net torque, the sum of all its torques, is equal to zero. So that means the torque that is acting on this object all cancel each other out, essentially. The nice thing about this normal force from the wall is that it's acting on its axis of rotation. It's not supplying any torque whatsoever. So we can say, well, the only two torques are going to be coming from this tension and this tension from the sine. And we calculate our torque by doing force times radius. Force times radius. Now, this r value is different for each one because that r value is not just the radius. Don't think of it as like the distance between the middle and the end of a circle. It's the distance from the middle to our, the, where the force is applied. And by middle, I mean the axis of rotation and where the force is applied. So we know that the sum of all our torques, zero, is equal to our force of tension. Now, the other component of torque that we want to make sure that we recognize is that we only consider the perpendicular component when we're calculating torque. So we say, okay, our force of tension in the y direction is the force that is perpendicular to this surface, to this massless rod here. So we're going to say FTY, which I know is FT cosine 50, times my r value. And one of the things that it tells us in the, in the problem is that it's 1.5 meters away from the uh, axis of rotation. So we're going to multiply that by 1.5 meters. All right? Now, that's the force that's pulling it up. The force that's pulling it, sorry, I shouldn't say up. I should say it's pulling it counterclockwise. There's also a force pulling it clockwise. And that is the force of tension opposing that rotation. So we're going to say that that's a negative rotation. You can set it, it's an arbitrary distinction, um, but we're going to say that's, that's the negative value. So we're going to subtract 1,000 newtons. And where is that force acting? Well, in the problem, I neglected to write it here, but it tells us that this point here is at one meter, one meter away from the wall. So now we know that that's times one meter. <coughs> so I'm going to rearrange this, and I'm going to move this whole thing. I'm going to add it to this side. It's going to become 1,000 newtons times one meter equals Ft cosine 50 times 1.5 meters. So that's actually pretty nice for us because now all I have is one variable and I can figure out what the force of tension in this rope is. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to take 1,000. I'm going to divide by 1.5. And then I'm going to divide by cosine of 50, making sure that I am in degree mode when I do so divided by cosine 50. And I get 1,037 newtons. 1,037 newtons. So, my force of tension is 1,037 newtons. But the problem is asking for the normal force coming out of the wall. So I can't just leave it as my force of tension here. I need to now recognize <coughs> that my force of tension in the x direction is equal to my normal force here. So I'm going to say, okay, FTX <coughs> is 
is equal to, right here, sine of 50 times Ft. Where I know that Ft is 1037. So I'm going to take that value, I'm going to multiply it times sine of 50, and I get 794.5 newtons. So that is not only my x component, but it is also my normal force because I know that those two components have to, in fact, cancel each other out because this object is not rotating, um, does not have a rotational acceleration, and it does not have a translational acceleration back and forth. So I can then determine that my normal force is 794.5 newtons. Hopefully that was a helpful hint in solving problems involving rotational equilibrium. Uh, have a great day.